Dude, I am not the kind of guy to own a bouncy house. But I've been trying... I forgot about this story. I've been meaning to tell this story since Sunday. I... We had... Um, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this. We went to a park on the weekend. And there was a bouncy castle. And there was one that was like little kid friendly. One of them was like, like adolescent friendly. It was like 7 to 15 year olds could get it. You had to climb like a an inflatable wall that was like 10, 15 feet high, and then you went down the slide on the other end. I was like, there's no way I'm letting my not even two-year-old get on this. But then there was another one that was like, it's basically like a, a bouncy ring, and then it had some obstacles on the inside. So I was like, you know what? I'm sure she'd have a great time. I took off her shoes. I put her inside of the bouncy castle. She bounced around a little bit. Then she uh, went behind an obstacle. I really can't stress that this thing is probably about 15 feet in diameter at most. She went behind an inflatable obstacle and immediately I was like, Ah! Where's my, where's my daughter? Where's, I didn't, I was freaking out internally. Not externally, but like I was get, I was like, there's 15 seconds until I, I jump in this bouncy castle. In my head, I just had a, like a uh, horrible vision of her being like uh, like Jon Snow Battle of the Bastards like uh, she got stuck under some kind of inflatable obstacle that the shitty company set up and she's like just daddy help me help and then like a second later she just walked out from behind it and was like ha, ha, ha. and I was like do you want to go and then we left <laughs> but it that was a big step for me to, to at least give her the independence to get inside of the bouncy castle. Sorry, I just have the crust of this sandwich left. NL, the type of guy to cry when his daughter goes to college? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that feels pretty reasonable. Hello, I am playing of, as I am. Hello, recapturing former glory in Fall Guys! Exclamation marks. Link in bio. Ever tell you how I'm the coolest streamer? I'm, this is self-aware, okay? Like, it's ironic. So many other streamers now, when they tweet, they say link in bio. You know why? Because one person made a post that said, um, the Twitter algorithm doesn't share posts that have outlinks in them. So your, your tweet about how you're going live is never going to get sucked up by the Twitter algorithm and sent out to 700,000 strangers as a result of um, you putting that outlink in there. Uh, counterpoint, nobody in Earth's history has ever seen a tweet from a stranger that said, I'm going live on Twitch and been like, oh yeah, I gotta click that. That shit is going off. Oh yeah, this is doing numbers. Hey, how'd you guys find the stream today? I had no fucking idea who you were. I have algorithmic Twitter on like a fucking psycho and your tweet pardon me, just popped up. And I was like, oh, a streamer playing Fall Guys, that's unique. I've never seen that uh, before in my life because it's uh, my first day on planet Earth. I'm a baby. Wah, wah. Don't lie, say you found my stream from the tweet. We all know there's only two reasons you're here, okay? One of them is that you started playing The Binding of Isaac, you Googled it and my YouTube videos came up. You said, hey, this could be fun. I'm interested in this game. And then it's six years later, and you're like, what the fuck's going on? Plus two, plus two, he's morbed out. This stream is deadly to bats, but it's lethal to humans. Or you saw me on the Co-Optional podcast like seven years ago, and you're like, hey, this guy sounds cool, and now you're in the same boat. You're here like seven years later, like, what the fuck is going on? Can I tell you something? I'm also having... It's a very sobering morning for me. Last night... um. As mentioned, it wasn't my night on baby duty. My wife, uh, while putting the baby to sleep, put her in her crib and then fell asleep on the on the nursery floor. We have a little cot like set up in there for this exact purpose because I, I have it happen to me sometimes as well. Um, so she fell asleep on the nursery floor, slept there all night. I woke her up when get, getting ready to take my shower after doing my Peloton ride. However, that's just the setup. That means I slept in, in our bed alone last night. I woke up and I had no blanket. What this means is that accidentally we've settled a decade long debate over how my wife ends up with the blanket every night. I always wake up with no blanket and I go, 
that's because you steal the blanket from me. And she goes, no, that's because you, like, give me the blanket. And I'm like, that doesn't make any damn sense. Well, last night I woke up, I had no blanket, and there was nobody else in the bed. So, admittedly, it's a sample size of one, but I have to admit that I think she's right in this case. I guess at night I get a little warm, and I say, here, you take this, and I, uh... I give her the blanket and I just sleep with like uh, with no cover. Life, right? Ah, dude. Honestly, I think one of the real benefits, and and this may sound counterintuitive, one of the real benefits of marriage is actually realizing how often you're wrong. And this is not like a a man woman thing, but if you live alone, you must be under the delusion that all of your opinions are right all the time, right? That's not realistic. That's not sensible. I guess it doesn't have to be marriage. You could just live with roommates. But, you know, when you live with other people, you get to hear different perspectives on, on things and, you know, different methods of doing the dishes. Some people put the dishes... Some people put the knives in the dishwasher pointy side down. Some people put them pointy side up, you know? We won. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. They've never seen anyone... Uh, the, the doctor who administered the test said, Wow, um, Mr. President, I've never seen a result like this before. It's, it's truly incredible. It's almost unbelievable. I prefer hand-washing dishes over the dishwasher. Is that weird? I think it depends on your, um, your workflow, okay? I think if you get in the habit of doing the dishes right as you make them, then I can understand why you prefer hand washing. Because why would you load the dishwasher with like three things if you could just wash them in two seconds? But I am a dishwasher, um, I'm dishwasher pilled for sure. I let the dishes sort of accumulate in the sink and then after dinner, uh, cause like lunch and breakfast, they're not making that many dishes. You let the dishes of the morning and the afternoon accumulate in the sink, and then after dinner, you you toss them all in the dishwasher, except for the, the nice uh, stuff that is not dishwasher friendly, unfortunately. Why not put them straight in? Sometimes I got other shit to do, I guess. <laughs> also, because I, I wait until after dinner to unload the dishwasher too, because usually I run it like while we're asleep. We got a good domestic workflow right now, so I like I'm not... I, did I even run the casino this time? I guess so. What if you have a dish rack? Well, that's fine too. Don't get me wrong. Here's the thing. We got a double sink, which is great. But, na but we don't have a whole lot of counter space because we have a blender, an air fryer, a toaster, a rice cooker, a bread box. You know, we got all this shit. So now we put... We have like this unrollable dish rack that goes over one of the sinks to allow us to dry the dishes over top of the sink. So we really only have one sink. But I'm envious of the of the big dish rack users in the McMansions. Me too, I'm not bragging about it. Well, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not bragging about having two sinks, that's nice. We don't have the HGTV bathroom. We still only have, uh, we have a one sink vanity in our bathroom. So we can't even, like, floss at the same time. It's ridiculous. You know what? I'm gonna list it. I'm not- I'm not loving it. I'm listing it. What's my deal breaker? Has to have two sinks in the bathroom. I'm so- I'm too old to be dealing with this one sink lifestyle. I mean, that's a textbook performance right there. What do you want me to say? If I had to scrap one of our single-use kitchen appliances, it would not be the air fryer. The air fryer is is absolutely insane for cooking baby food, reheating food, cooking any kind of frozen food. I would, um, it wouldn't be the rice cooker. The, the rice cooker is unbelievable for, for two reasons. First off, the rice that it makes is better than the rice that you're making in your pot. And I would, I honestly, if you give me a blind taste test, I believe that that would bear out. The other thing is that it's actually just also a rice holder. So you just cook twice as much rice as you need and then you eat as much as you were going to eat normally and then the next time you make a meal, you got instant rice that's already cooked and just sitting there as long as you haven't left it in the, in the rice cooker for like a week, it's good to go. It stays like... It, it uses a little bit of electricity to, to keep the rice warm and moist and not, uh, you know... I don't know, rotten? <laughs> I guess? And, uh... I guess if, if I had to pick one, it would be the blender, honestly. I'm not... I understand the utility of a blender. It can be nice to have it in some situations, but I am trying to shield. I'm trying to shield like it's Rumbleverse. 
I'm insane. He lived. I'm dead. I'm dead. That was a great shot. What can you say about that? It was a great shot. Choose prediction. We did not qualify. That's fair. That's a standard. It was a great placement. He died, point and laugh. Don't make me regret this emo placement, okay? What the heck? That's a damn uh, stream sniper. Hey, you, Joe. You, you know what? I'm going to say congrats. At Joe Motiki. Congrats. Enjoy your victory. Audit them? I mean, they won fair and square. It wasn't like they, they were just coming straight after me or whatever. There's nothing... So, like, how did we almost not qualify there? It's society's fault, okay? Because here's what happened. I knew that that leftmost door was going to be our window. Unfortunately... There was the average person on our left that said, no, right door closer, right door closer. They didn't realize that by the time we got to the right door, the shit was going to be closed up. So they were, they were standing shoulder to shoulder and they were like, no, go this way, go this way, go this way. That's why we couldn't learn multiplication until the third grade. Please, sir, they're five years old. I'm sick of this. It's always, oh, they're kids, they're kids. If the kids are playing the game, there's only two choices, okay? It's kill or be killed. You could either beat the kids or you could lose to the kids. I've made my choice. Well, I came in second last time. I mean, there's some really, really good gamers out there, regardless of their age. I did see a thread on Reddit that kind of blew me away. The thread title was, Have you ever hit a stranger's kid? <laughs> and uh, when, you th when you see that, First off, you know there's a 100% chance you're clicking on it. But then, of course, the first thing you say is, uh, no. Obviously, why would you ever hit a stranger's kid? That's, like, way over the line. Uh, you shouldn't hit your own kid to begin with, but a stranger's kid... I don't know, I guess I don't feel comfortable saying is worse. They're kind of both really, really bad. But then, there was a lot of posts. Like, the top post was like, yes, I had, I had to slap a 10-year-old at the, at the park once. Because, you know, everyone, the parents are just sitting on the bench watching the kids play, which is how things happen. And then their 10-year-old pinned my 4-year-old to the ground and started kicking the shit out of them. So I had no choice but to, like, slap the 10-year-old. And I was like, you know what? Kind of makes sense to me. I, I'm not saying that that's that physical violence is the answer, but I mean, that's a situation that would get your adrenaline pumping. You know, that's like self-defense. It's not yourself, but it's someone who can't defend themselves. So that's self-defense. I need to find an excuse like that. Well, you know, you're not even mad at the 10-year-old that much. I mean, I, again, we've gone... Macros, this one's for you. Did you see you've entered the lore of the community, by the way? Someone on r slash Northern Line made a post that said, where did the meme, this one's for you, Macros start? And then people correctly said, surmised it was macros is from australia so anything remotely oceanic is now preceded by this one's for you macros i mean we're swiveling <laughs> we are swiveling i sorry i keep repeating the same bit over and over but it's so annoying to go to the playground i felt bad like the parents who are like just basically being derelict or caretakers we were at the playground two weekends ago and there was a kid i don't know he's probably like seven he's a seven year old boy and he was just camping the slide. Like, he was sitting at the top of the slide, and he had a bunch of, like, toy cars and stuff like that. And he, we were like, hey, is it possible? Could you move to the side? Could you move your car to the side so that other people can use the slide? And he's like, no, my cars are sleeping. And you just kind of like, I'm having a talk with this stranger, this stranger, strange child. I look over at, like, his uncle or something. His uncle is just sitting on like a rock in the playground just staring out into space and i'm giving the uncle a look like hey buddy like it's why am i doing this shit like why am i doing your job for you like can't you teach your kids some manners or your nephew or whatever and he just like didn't care at all um and then i realized you know what fuck you this is my nephew now and so i started like i realized the kid probably just wanted like some attention because he's not getting any attention from his uh family so i was like oh why are the cars sleepy and he's like oh they drive a lot today and i was like oh that's cool where did they drive and he was like just around the park and i was so we had like a, a two minute long conversation and then finally the kid moved like his shit off of the slide and we could use the slide again but i was like you're like i just want to like it, it would be nice if there was like a time machine so you could talk to the kid like his future self and be like hey i'm sorry like your uncle fucking sucks okay 
I don't know if he's hung over or like he just doesn't care. Like he wasn't even looking at his phone. He was just staring into nothingness. Like, just wish I could give him like his future self a message that's like, hey kid, you know, this, this part of your life it's not forever. You're gonna have the chance for some self-actualization. Don't worry. And you know what? Maybe because of that conversation, he's gonna become like a mechanic or something like that. Or he's gonna cure automobile narcolepsy or something. It's just annoying. It, like, people take their kid to the park and then they're like, well, my work here is done. No, now you gotta make sure they're not fucking things up for everybody else. Anyway, sorry. Would love your thoughts on this. A lot of parents take their kid to the park and then are like, hands off from that point onwards. And I understand, because it's easy to tell yourself, like, oh, at some point they've got to learn how to, like, you know, manage themselves. Yeah, where do you think they learn that from? Idiot? TV? Like, you gotta teach them, wait your damn turn. I've made a horrible mistake. You gotta teach them, like, hey, be conscientious to those around you. We can't win, but... What? That was a cracked lobby, dude! Holy cow! There's a... A happy medium between, like, being a helicopter parent that stands over top of their kid and is like, My child would like to use the slide now. Mom says it's my turn to use the slide. Like, that's too far in one direction. But then too far in the other direction is like, my kid's fucking things up for everybody else. And I'm just gonna pretend I don't see it. They're both annoying, but... The, the latter is much more annoying than the former. In Asian societies, it's considered normal to slap other kids as long as they're within your in-group. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I'm not saying that's the way it should be, but definitely, even when I taught in Korea, I mean, the, South Korea is culturally fairly similar in a broad sense to North America, I would say. But even in uh, school, like, you could issue punishments. I wouldn't say they're like corporal punishments, but you, and I didn't do this because I didn't feel comfortable with it, but you could, if a kid was misbehaving, you could tell them to get up against the wall and like bend their knees into a sit squat and basically just stay there until failure. You could basically just have them stand up against the wall until their the lactic acid starts flooding their legs. And they're like, teacher, stop. Like, teacher, I'm sorry. And you're like, no. And then you just, you know, Eventually, they just sort of fall down, and then you're like, okay, that's your punishment served. It does, it, I mean, it's really good for your quads. It's really, honestly, if anything, you're kind of doing them a favor, like, long term. But then, what you do is, like, ten years later, you add those kids to your, uh, your cycling team. And it's called playing the long con. That's how you end up with, like, a Lance Armstrong, Floyd Landis type situation. I had a teacher do that in Canada? Really? I definitely did not go to school where anybody got hit. I'm trying to think of like, the only punishment I can really think of that crossed the line was in sixth grade. One kid didn't do his homework, and he was like a known troublemaker. One kid out of 30 didn't do his homework, so the teacher kept the entire class in from recess. And even like, at age 12, everybody was like, this is not like the way that an adult Okay, like, what's wrong with you? This is not the way an adult should be handling this situation. Is like, collective punishment for the whole class, because, like, one person has probably, like, a fucked up family life? That seems a little crazy. Anyway, that's the only one I can really remember that was... that crossed the line in that sense, I would say. Just let me get over the ball. Dive. Bro, no! Holy cow. Was he a football coach? No, he was just like a hard ass for no reason. Actually, and I'm sorry, if you've watched for long enough, you've definitely heard this story before. Same teacher, one of my uh, friends and acquaintances got the right, it was like, you know, he's sixth grade. You're doing like two digit by two digit multiplication or something like that. He got most of the right answers on a math test, but didn't really show his work. So even though he got almost all the answers correct, he got like a C minus on this math test. And then he took, he raised his hand in the class and was like, hey, this doesn't make sense if I can do the work and get it right. Like, why do I have to prove that I showed my work? Okay, so, you know, it's, there's an interesting discussion to be had there on whether or not showing your work is relevant. 
um, at that level if you can do it in your head. But anyway, um, the wrong thing to do is what the teacher did, which is uh, get into an argument with the class, like with the kid in front of the class for like 45 minutes. Uh, while the rest of the class just sat there awkwardly, like Jesse Pinkman, drinking their water. And then we were supposed to do a shop lesson on how to use a miter saw. And, like, this kid was crying, right? He was like, I, I don't want to show my parents this C-. minus." Like, he, he was very academically minded. He just didn't show his work, but he got the, he got the right answers. Um, so the teacher said, like, okay, if you don't... Like, let, let this go. I'm gonna have to take the whole class out and do the lesson in the hallway. And he was like, I'm not giving up on this. So he took the whole class out and we had our... We had our lesson on how to use a miter saw out in the, the damn hallway. Not a very mature response. The dude is like 60 years old, too. And it's the sixth grade. Like... You couldn't just cut the kid a break and been like, okay, I'll give you the marks for getting the answers right, but like at the same time, next time, please show your work. It's just such a, it's a weird hill to die on. Sounds like the teacher won that one. Well, I suppose. A bit of a power imbalance, but. <laughs> I didn't qualify. I, I ran off the side. <laughs> Sounds like you have a problem with the Ontario education system. I kind of do. I mean, but like, here's the thing. People like, they... I benefit from people thinking this is a bit. But it's not really a bit. I think... May, maybe it's a bit to say that kids should have more homework. Because I don't really think that that's... That represents my philosophy 100%. But I definitely think like the school curriculum should be harder and ramp up faster. But I do also understand that you know you've got uh, 30 kids in the class with different levels and of, of both academic ability and interest. But I definitely feel like you could make it harder, and that would be good. Like without it wouldn't compromise. Well, I don't know. I was gonna say it wouldn't have compromised my quality of life. But that's not even true. It actually, it would have raised my quality of life to not spend three months on like the same math lesson. But yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right. They need a fast pass. Well, I guess like private school is already sort of a fast pass. True, true. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if I've ever known anybody that's gone to private school. I'm sure there's some in the chat. Would love your thoughts on this. So, I mean, French immersion, I think is cool. We had, uh, there were kids at my high school who were in French Immersion. There's only like eight of them. And I will say, okay, this is too far. None of those kids um, were like overachievers. But at the very least, at least they spoke French very well. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was like there was a leg up on, on the competition. Like none of those kids were academically stellar. But all of them were like, at least I have French. Which is actually like a really good skill to have in Canada. It qualifies you for a lot of other jobs, including like stable government jobs that have a pension. It's an actual, very marketable skill to have. Much more marketable than knowing, you know, how to like write a chemistry equation and see what the result would be from the reactants. So, I, I, if anything, I'm a little envious. Although, honestly, I bet it's kind of annoying to know French when you fly Air Canada. Because they do all the announcements in English and then in French. So, I hear the English one. And then when the French one starts, I'm like, ah, I can just put my movie back on. But if you speak French, you're probably like, ah, I can't turn this off. I can't turn this off. I'm... Bienvenue d'abord Air Canada. Pour votre comfort et sécurité. Please pay attention to this short safety video. So vrai, so, so vrai, so vrai. Mmm. My souffle, s'il vous plaît. Mmm, très bien. Avec beurre, sir. I'm still thinking about that tweet that was uh, modern James Bond. James, if you don't learn how to deal with um, the neglect of your father, you'll never learn how to stop drinking in response to all the extrajudicial killings you have to do. Old James Bond, my name is Rebecca Ass. <laughs> I guess. 
I was paraphrasing the first part, but the second part I got down for sure. It's it's such a good, it's such a perfect tweet. I don't get it. Modern James Bond has a little bit more, uh, I don't know, like pathos associated with it. Old James Bond was like basically Sean Connery just being like a chauvinist who murders people. And there was no subtext at all. There was the other one too that was in the replies from like a few years ago. That was like, uh, new James Bond, something, 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 you know, the same thing. Old James Bond, I'll shoot the koala and, ha and the other ones will be distracted while I have sex with the zookeeper. Yeah, like, Goldfinger is maybe the best old James Bond movie, and it's really good. And the Bond girl is called Pussy Galore. Like, it's just, it's, it's staggering. I mean, that was not 200 years ago. That was in like 1970 or something. <laughs> There's Octopussy, Pussy Galore. That's why, and again, this is all from the original thread. They're like, it's the rare situation where the satire is more subtle than the thing being satirized. Like a lot of vagina is actually like a more sensible name than Pussy Galore. I hear that cat number two is into big underground drills. Who told you that? Oh, how did you know that? No, I didn't, baby. You just told me. Holly Goodhead? Yeah, I mean, it's... I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. You've bested me. Never mind. You stink. There is, um... I mean, it's not like modern James Bond is immune. Denise Richards as Dr. Christmas Jones. At the end of the movie, they have intercourse, and he says, I thought Christmas only comes once a year. I mean, like, that shit was in, like, 2000 and... 2001, maybe? They called her Christmas Jones, just so James could have that line at the end. There's not a plus two. It's, like, so cringe. A lot of those late Pierce Brosnan movies are, are pretty cringe, though. Her first name was Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> James Bond has sex. Bad chest. Bad chest. All he needs to do now is poop his pants. I mean, even Goldeneye. Goldeneye... Look, if you're gonna... I don't know. Casino Royale might be my favorite Bond movie. It might be Goldeneye. It might be Goldfinger. But, uh... Even in Goldeneye... One of the villains... Kills... Dudes by riding them and then squeezing her thighs together with such prodigious force that like their bones crack. Which, first off, me and who? But secondly, I mean, it's not exactly, I guess you shouldn't necessarily assume that James Bond is gonna be like the, the most subtle uh, artwork on the planet, but like, <laughs> that's definitely an extra level of on the nose, I suppose. Pretty realistic. Really? Has this ever happened to you? You pick your shot. Was her name Psycho Mantis? No, it was Xenia on a top. So it was like, at least her first name was not like, you know, sexual. But she do be killing the people from being on a top of them. What do you think James Bond makes per month? I bet he doesn't get paid that much because he's a government employee. But I bet his pension is fucking insane. Stop. Can you just... Can you just go? Can you be faster? Me to the person in front of me at the self-checkout? Can I tell you a self-checkout story? It's self-checkout Thursday. Um, two days ago at the grocery store, I bought grapes, okay? They came in a bag with a barcode on it. I go to the self-checkout, I scan the barcode, it said, unknown product. This is not in our database. Please wait for someone to help you. Nobody came to help me. So I examined the bag and saw that they had the product code on it. I typed the product code in the same way you would type in the product code for any kind of produce. It said, oh, these are grapes. They're in our system. I say, yeah. Then I went to pay and it said, hold on. We got to have someone to verify because there was an unknown item involved in this purchase. Great system. Do we really need, I, again, I, I'll stop bringing it up when it stops being relevant. I, I don't need staff's permission to pay for my groceries because I could have just walked out the fucking door with the shit in my bag to begin with, okay? So why are we pretending that I couldn't have just stolen this stuff?
you're like, oh, hold on. We want to make sure everything's on the level on the self-checkout. If I was trying to steal something, I would have just put it in my pocket and walked out. There's no security. Like, pirating the groceries is the way to go now. Cameras? Come on. No one's using the cameras to stop you from shoplifting from the damn Wegmans. Hold on. We're, we're two Hershey bars short on our count today. All right, pour through every frame of the security footage. To find somebody. <laughs> Come on, man. You know how I know they don't do that shit? Because I've stolen shit from the grocery store accidentally. Just by having it on the bottom of my cart. And then, like, you go to the cashier and you're like, Oops, I forgot there was, like, a 12-pack of, you know, Diet LaCroix down here. You get to your car and you're like, Am I really gonna go back in? Like, I kind of already got away with it. And then I just think to myself, You know, I'm sure it comes out in the wash. I'm sure there's probably been times I've been, like, double-charged for something and because I feel weird about staring at the uh, transaction on the screen as it goes up, then I'm like, you know, I didn't notice it. So I just, I just assume that, you know, human beings are, inherently they make mistakes. I just assume you get a, you get the roughly equivalent amount of mistakes in your favor as you get mistakes uh, against you. And, and apart from that, you know, I'll let St. Peter do the auditing. I'm amazing. I'm still amazing. What? Have fun in prison. <laughs> I had a family friend steal a candy bar and they almost went to prison for it. Don't take this the wrong way, but I don't believe you. How, wh what's the process of them going to, you can't, I don't think you can go to prison for like anything anymore except maybe like murder. We get news stories in Vancouver. This this is a genuine news story. A, a woman got stabbed with a hypodermic needle. And we you read the news story, you're like, this is crazy. And then you read the last line and it said the suspect was released under their own cognizance later in the day. And you're like, really? They stabbed someone on the street with like a, a used syringe and the cops were like, all right, just come back for your court date in, in nine months. A streamer got arrested for stealing a sip of water. What are you talking about? Is this true? This is an Atriox story. Can I get the cliff notes on this? It was in Florida. Okay, that's honestly, that's great cliff notes. That tells me everything I need to know. I think. Every once in a while, you'll see someone who's eating like a, like a bag of peanuts or something in the grocery store. You're just like, you really like, eating while grocery shopping is like a level of, I, free sample, sure. But there's a level of decadence that I'm like, I don't know. Who am I, Caligula? I'll just wait till I get into the damn car. Start ripping into the spicy salami before I even get to the damn conveyor belt? I don't think so. What about the grape? Okay, least uh, insane viewer spotted. At age three, four, or five, I did pluck a single grape off of the grape uh, vine in the produce section when I was grocery shopping with my mom. And then she traumatized me by, like, not yelling at me, but administering a harsh lesson that said, that's stealing. So since that point onwards, I, I mean, I don't sample the produce. I don't go to the bulk section and take a handful of uh, corn nuts and go, oh yeah, those are good. And then just buy, you know, quinoa like I was originally there for. Like, I'm, I'm a lawful good grocery shopper. You know how I know I'm a lawful good grocery shopper? I always return the cart. That's a given. I always put the basket in the basket section. A lot of people just be leaving their basket on the side of the self-checkout for the next person to put away. And you know what I also do? If the person before me did not put their basket in the basket section, I will put their basket and my basket in the basket section. Hero's not a word that I use lightly. But if you want to, then be my guest. Also, these lazy assholes, the receipt gets printed out of the self-checkout. They don't take it. They just let the receipt stay there. What do you think happens? The receipt fairy comes and just says, oh, no problem, and, and throws it in the recycling? No, you know what happens? I go up next, I take your receipt and my receipt, and then I put it in the recycling. And my time is more valuable than yours, to be frank. I know that sounds a little narcissistic, but I just saw what you did with your time. I know that in your free, if this is what you're doing when you're in public, in private, it's probably just a den of shame. You gotta be the change you wanna see in the world, okay?
is exactly true. I am the receipt fairy. Thermal paper is not recyclable. It's ne Look, here's the thing. At the recycling plant, I doubt they're pouring out a dumpster full of paper and then they're like, oh, there's one thermal piece in here. Send it off to the landfill. I'm sure they're just taking the dumpster and then sending it off to the landfill, okay? I think it should be illegal. If some shit can't be recycled, it should be illegal to... Um, hold on, I haven't thought this one. We'll lead us to kings! We'll rig and lead us to... But like... There's... Do you know that like not all plastic is recyclable, right? If you look at a piece of recyclable plastic, there's like six different plastic types. And like every jurisdiction and municipality has like ones that they can and can't recycle. Why don't we just make it illegal to make the ones that you can't recycle? I'm sure it's more expensive or like maybe they they don't have the same kind of like industrial rigor or something like that. But like if, if it's gonna fuck up the whole batch of recycling, if you put a plastic product six in a bin that can only handle plastic products one through five, Maybe it's a, maybe the system is the problem because no sane person could possibly keep all that shit in their head while also trying to live their life. We gotta like, just, just make plastic product six, like, just ban that shit or something. I don't know. I don't really know because like half the restaurants in Vancouver now use like biodegradable containers. But if you order like Korean fried chicken, that shit's just coming in a, like a styrofoam case with the corners cut off so the shit doesn't get gummy. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know if they're just kind of riding it out until there's some sort of, uh, some sort of enforcement, but I mean, I just, I'm a simple man, okay? I throw, if something's plastic, I throw it in the plastic recycling bin because like, I just don't see, like it's, it, maybe it sounds in, like I'm being apathetic. I don't think I should be expected to have such a, a rigorous knowledge of the difference between all of the different types of plastic. Oh, this is, this plastic's recyclable, but this is, um, well, this is biodegradable, but it's biodegradable with a wax coating, so that's not recycling. No, actually, biodegradable with a wax coating still goes into the compost because wax is, uh, uh, is uh, an organic, uh, organic compound. Oh, but this is uh, plastic wax. This is, a, this is a tapioca plastic bag. This one goes into the cans. Like, I just, I just put it in the most logical, like the, the simplest recycling bin for me. And then I let God sort it out, honestly. Push it, push it, push it. One, yeah, 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 go, 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 go. The other guy's got it. Okay. Did you see the clip of Dan where he was asked to place Iceland on a map and he clicked the United Kingdom? I completely believe that. And I, I, that does not make Dan stupid. It does mean that he doesn't have a great knowledge of world geography. But I do, I, I completely believe that that was not a bit. And then he posted it on TikTok of his own volition. I mean, if we're being real, we, uh, I mean, I got some Canadian provinces wrong on the map uh, like three days ago. I placed Prince Edward Island in Nova Scotia. He thought Ireland and the UK were Greenland and Iceland? Okay, come on. <laughs> come on. Like, that one is just... Here's, here's the play. Iceland is green, Greenland is ice. So this, one of these two are Iceland. And I think Iceland is bigger. <laughs> I will say, if you're not North American, you would be amazed how easy it is to be North American and learn nothing about the world outside of North America. They make it really easy. I'm not even from the United States. And even then, I can understand it. Like, the U.S. is a big country. It's It's got lots of, like, regional diversity. So it feels like it's not just, like, you know, one small country. Um, they produce, like, the bulk of the world's most popular cinema the bulk of the world's most popular TV. It becomes very easy to get into a, a North America bubble. And the school system is not teaching classes that are like, here's how to find Spain on a map, you know? You kinda, you gotta be an overachiever to start looking for that stuff. Bro, yes, thank you! Get the fuck out of the way! See, if nobody gets in my way, I can't be stopped. This is why I'm so good at Formula One. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
I didn't think it had that kind of push, man. Oh, no, I did not qualify. I didn't think it had that kind of sustain. Ooh, that is the kind of thing. If I was in politics, people would clip that whole slime climb and be like, we got to get this fucker out of there. He's gone. If I'm just having a, like a slow brain day. Like, I feel like the thoughts are heavy today. Like, they're, they're still getting from point A to point B. They're just, they're taking a little longer and a little bit more effort to get there, okay? This shit's starting to piss me off. People are really going off on... People are really going off on Peppa Pig on Twitter. Like, I, you can love Bluey without trying to knock down Peppa Pig, okay? Like, Bluey, sure, I, I get it. Every, all the adults love Bluey because it teaches kids how to be, you know, empathetic or something. But you don't have to, like, Peppa Pig is still good. Have you seen some of the other dog shit that's on TV for kids? I like Peppa Pig because it deals with real scenarios. Daddy Pig lost his glasses. Peppa Pig lost her boots. Oh, we left the door open and a parrot got outside. You know, I'm not going to qualify. Peppa is a piece of shit? What are you talking about? Peppa Pig is not a piece of shit. She's five years old. How is she a piece of shit? Didn't she go to the moon? Yes, on one episode she went to the moon to try to get her boots back. But that, it's, it's like the X-Files, right? Like they started to run out of ideas in the later seasons and they went a little crazy with it. Like that, it, but there's like eight seasons of classic Peppa Pig. I still say maybe, like, I, I just saw some bad Bluey episodes, but I am surprised at how people are, like, are like in love with Bluey. They're, like, it, they're real people. And I'm like, the only episode I can remember of Bluey that I've seen is the dad uh, wants to throw out some old drawings the kids made, but he knows if he does it in front of the kids, they'll um, cry. So he goes to the dump with his kids and throws all the shit away, and then they see the drawings, and they go, Daddy, why are you throwing away our drawings? That makes us feel bad. And I was like, this show is not real. Is the dad the biggest idiot on the planet? Like, why don't you just wait till they go to sleep and then throw out the drawings? Like, it's, it's the easiest crime to get away with of all time. The One Piece! <laughs> the One Piece is real! Okay, good one, good one. Studies have shown Peppa Pig watching reduces someone's speaking skills. Come on. Who did that study? Someone jealous of the success of Peppa Pig. This is an unbelievable statement. I, I refuse to believe it. You can't just say study show. Link to the JSTOR, okay? University of Bluey put out that study. Absolutely. Ooh, studies have shown that children that grow up watching Bluey uh, have a greater chance to grow up to be billionaires. Anybody that watches any other television program grows up to be a, a hater and an asshole who can't parallel park. Only Bluey viewers stay winning. I got nothing against Bluey. It's just that the, the Bluey lovers go way too far. At least it's not blippy. Like, hold on. Ooh, he's back. It's not, it doesn't have to be a rivalry. Like, they're making it a mutually exclusive thing. You can only watch Bluey or Peppa Pig. You can, you can, watch, you can watch those, you can watch Sesame Street. My adult friends without kids watch Bluey? That's just insanity. They should just have a kid and get it over with. If you're already watching children's television programs for entertainment, like, you might as well have a kid. That's it's so sad. I'm reading that from chat. I didn't say that's so sad, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know if it's sad, but it's... You know what it is? It's a reminder of how much more free time you have in general. Not, not everybody, but... In general, how much more free time you have before you have a kid. People without kids be like, yeah, I watch kids TV shows when I have some spare time, just for fun. I'm not flaming, I'm just saying. Thoughts on Paw Patrol? I really, I genuinely feel like the television program your kid watches, as long as it's a kid's television program, probably is not gonna have that much of an impact on their, uh, on their psyche, quite frankly. Like, I know that Childless Prime subs in my chat really don't like Paw Patrol because one of the dogs is a cop. But like, it's just a, it's just a TV show with like a... The dogs like fly airplanes and stuff like that. They, they drive cars. Other, other stuff that's not necessarily like a reasonable facsimile of what happens with dogs in, in normal human life. If, if our daughter says, I want to watch that one, 
and she points to Paw Patrol. I'll let her watch an episode of Paw Patrol now and then. I'm, I'm really not that concerned about it. The only thing I won't let her watch is genuinely, I won't let her watch Coco Melon. Because it, it just, I don't know, it just gives me the creeps. It seems like it was developed by a, like a malevolent child psychologist to, to stupefy. Oh! <laughs> I didn't even know I could make, oh, whatever, I'm chilling. My two-year-old loves Coco Melon. My two-year-old nephew loves Coco Melon, but it definitely turns him into a zombie. Well, like, here's the thing that I'll say. This is, people are judgmental. This is not just a parents or non-parents thing, but like sometimes it can be like a good thing if your kid becomes a zombie. Sometimes you've been like intellectually fulfilling your child's needs for like 10 hours straight and you kind of just need them to chill out for like an hour or something. So you just, you know, put on some Peppa Pigs, put on some Bluey and then like drink a cup of tea and scroll through your phone for a little bit. And then after after your small break, you're good to be like a good parent again. You just take a little moment. It's the same thing where people always say like, oh, if I went bald, I would go get jacked. I would def, cause I, being bald and out of shape like I am right now, that would be horrendous. But as soon as my life gets harder, I'm gonna do something I'm already not doing. People without kids sometimes would be like, I would never let my kid do that. I'm dead, by the way. Casino's still running. We'll delete that. I'm like, bro, you are you have so much free time and your life's already a disaster. Of course, you're like, that's why hu human beings are here. You know, like, like we're all human beings. You're going to have days where you're like, I can't read Hop on Pop one more time. I'm going to like, I'm going to go insane. That's what Sesame Street's for. That's what Peppa Pig is for. You're not going to be teaching your kid like you know, to do first derivatives when they're four years old. It's madness. Like, you can't even maintain the f a flossing habit. And you're like, well, if I had a kid, I would never let them eat a french fry. Yeah, okay. Why don't you start by, like, folding the laundry that's been sitting in your hamper for, like, two weeks and then tell me about how you're going to be, like, a super parent when you have no free time. Whereas right now, you have all the free time in the world and you're not doing shit. It's, it's, it's delusional. Stop, please. I've... What is, is that aware? We finally found a use case for aware. That hit, that hits too close to home. Why does, I, I'm just saying, don't be so judgmental. Don't let your kids watch Paw Patrol. One of the dogs is a cop. Okay, why don't you fucking like, stop leaving your shit in the washer. You gotta take it out of the washer as soon as the wash is done. Otherwise it's gonna get moldy in the washer before you put it in the dryer. You're gonna wait like six hours with your damp clothes in the washer. You're gonna put it in the dryer, dry it, and then you're gonna be like, why does my clothes smell? I just cleaned them. It's cause you left them in the damn washer. And yet you're gonna tell me you're gonna maintain such a, a strong set of principles when your life gets harder? No, you're gonna bend even more cause that's what the human beings do. Let me out. Thoughts on the song Short People by Randy Newman? It's, it honestly is one of my favorite Randy Newman songs. As long as you know that it's satirical. He doesn't actually hate short people. In fact, he might be one of them himself. It's a, that's a good song. Short people got nobody. Short people got nobody. Randy Newman, 6'3". Never mind, I hate that song. It's a, That song is a hate crime. I have never listened to it willfully. 5'6 here, I love that song. Do you only listen to the part where he goes, Short people are just the same as you and I. Oh, fools such as I. All men are brothers until the day they die. It's a wonderful world. I'm <laughs> sorry. Randy Newman impression is like the easiest impression of all time. Don't touch me, motherfucker. Which is why it became popularized on Family Guy. It's a minus two Randy Newman impression? What, are you really? I've been listening to a lot of You Got a Friend in Me against my will. You got troubles, but I got them too. There ain't another thing I wouldn't do for you. <laughs> You're right, it is pretty bad. <laughs> Did anybody die? 
You're just singing is not an impression. <laughs> what are you talking about? Some of the people might be a little bit smarter than I am. Bigger or stronger to move. Then up to the way I do for you. That's not that's not a good Randy Newman. It seemed like a good Randy Newman for me. Oh, sorry. Choose prediction. We did 39%? Come on. If only you could hear yourself. Through the bones in my skull, it sounds good, okay? Have you ever heard this song? What are you talking about? You got a friend in me. That's not Randy Newman? That sounds perfect to me. You got a friend in me. That was better. That's good. Sorry, okay, I had to I had to get myself ready for it. I'm malicious, mean, and scary. My sneer could curdle dairy. And violence-wise, my hands are not the cleanest. But despite my evil look, and my temper, and my hook, I've always yearned to be a concert pianist. Can't you see me on the stage performing Mozart? Twinkling the ivories till they gleam. Though I do like breaking femurs, you can count me with the dreamers. Cause way down deep inside, I've got a dream. I've got a dream. He's got a dream. Okay, sorry. Listen to the Lion King Broadway soundtrack. Hey, I saw anyone Toronto pilled here. For my eighth grade graduation trip, our school went to Toronto and we saw the Lion King at the Prince of Wales Theater. Princess of Wales Theater? It was like an Ontario rite of passage, I think. And uh, then we saw a Toronto Blue Jays versus Tampa Bay Devil Rays game when they were still called the Devil Rays. And when they were perennially, like, by far the worst team in the AL East. And we went to medieval times. I And they... I don't know, this is kind of fucked up. But it was awesome when I was, like, 13. When we went to medieval times... They told us in advance that our knight was going to win because like one of our teachers knew the manager of medieval times or something like that. And at the time as a kid, I was like, that's awesome because we know our knight's going to win. But as an adult, I was like thinking about the fact that there's like kids in other sections and stuff like that. Like we weren't the only kids in medieval times. It's just kind of a little bit fucked up that you could just be like, oh yeah, we're here for our 8th grade graduation. All these kids win and all the other kids sitting in like the Yellow Knight section. <laughs> or like, but they don't even know that they're going to lose. They're, and they don't know. I mean, it's obviously it's rigged, but they don't know that it's like rigged on top of being rigged. Obviously it's fake. They're not really fighting. But then also like the fakeness was also rigged in advance. I don't know how they choose who wins on a, on a normal day. Maybe that's how they do it. Maybe it's just whoever's got the grade eight graduation trip, but they change the night every four months or so. Whenever there's a famous person there, they make them win. Wait, like a famous person plays the night and they win automatically, or whenever there's a famous person in the stands. I can understand that. I don't think it's right, but I can understand it. That's crazy, hop on Rumbleverse. I did, uh, look, this is the beauty of Fall Guys. Time slipped away from me a little bit, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on a Rumbleverse next for sure. Yeah, dude, I went and my knight was Neil deGrasse Tyson. You have just created the most plausible lie of all time. Because it sounds like a lie, but it also sounds true. If someone told me, like if I went to Medieval Times and they were like, the Red Knight is Neil deGrasse Tyson tonight. I would be like, that tracks. He's kind of like a dork. I was thinking about making a tweet last night because I've been doing pretty well in Rumbleverse, not to brag or anything. Um, I thought about making a tweet that was like, I'm going to start walking like Morpheus walks for real. You know how Morpheus walks with his arms crossed behind his back? But then I couldn't find a... I googled Morpheus and there was no picture of him walking with his arms crossed behind his back. And then I googled Morpheus walking, and there was no picture of him walking like that, but there were some cosplayers doing it. And then I googled Morpheus standing, and it brought up the same photos as Morpheus walking. That's how every old dude at H-Mart walks? No, you got... The old dudes at H-Mart walk with their hands clasped behind them. The, I'm talking about arms crossed, like grabbing opposite elbows. You're not, you're not wrong. I do see a lot of people at H Mart 
A lot of 70 year old men walking like that while their spouse takes a really long time to pick out a radish is the best posture to look at fruit. Postures to look at fruit too. This posture goes hard for looking at fruit. Feel free to screenshot. Okay, okay. How do you grab your elbows like that? I'm gonna be honest, I tried to do it last night just to see if I could do it, and then it made my right shoulder hurt a little bit. So then I tried it just now to demonstrate it for, for you, and my right shoulder still hurt. I thought maybe like I would have been warmed up or something like that, and I would have like been able to do it, but I don't know. It's just, it's, I, I, when I was, oh, I'm not gonna qualify. I'm not, no, not qual, okay, well, then it's Rumbleverse time. You know, I say, like, sometimes when you get older, you just give up on, like, recovering from injuries. When I was lifting, this is, like, March 2019, I did a shoulder press, and I felt something, like, just slip in my shoulder. And then the shoulder hurt for, like, a month. I still, I, re I gave it time for recovery, but it hurt for, like, a month. And then still, like, you know, when I did that Morpheus thing, I was like, oh, I guess it's not healed. <laughs> it's still it's still still something going on in there that probably will just never be the same but that's okay let me get a little slash marker um, um, um fall guys how the hell did Lawrence Fishburne do it though that's the real question you got yellow juice in your diaper excuse me I'm probably the only person in this chat that's actually um changing diapers on a daily basis right now so if you could not resurface my trauma that would be nice my baby's been eating a lot of dairy lately. They haven't been the best diapers I've ever seen in my life. They have not been easy to change. They're, they're turning into like, whoops, <laughs> like um, six wipers instead of like a previous two wiper. Oh, that's nasty. Well, you brought it up and by you, I mean like one person in the chat. I know I'm the one feeding her the dairy. That's what she wants to eat. I have a five month old. Okay, I mean, that's like, you're changing more diapers than me. All I'm going to say, it, it gets better. Well, sort of. It gets better and it gets worse. Hello. Okay, now. The One Piece. <laughs> the One Piece is real. I don't understand the can we get much higher part of the meme. He knows. I, I mean, yeah, I clicked on the trending topic and I saw... Howard from Better Call Saul saying the One Piece is real. Then I saw a bunch of like edited videos of the One Piece characters with like enormous phalluses. And then I like that, I'm, I'm with you so far, okay? But then I saw like a bunch of gifts that are like me when I clicked on the trending topic, the One Piece is real and oh my God, the things that I saw. And I'm like, you didn't actually do, you didn't actually go Oh, my heart, you know? Come on, it's... You haven't seen, like, a a huge cartoon penis on the internet before? And yet you watch anime? Like, I don't... I, I simply don't believe it. Why are you pretending that, like, you're a prude? You're on the internet. You're, you're a degenerate like the rest of us. Stop acting like, like you're above it. Doesn't make any sense to me. Chicken truck? Forget that bat for now. I don't, I don't respect the bat as far as weapons go. Okay, Thanos. Valley Girl Thanos. Tony, we talked about this. There's approximately 50% too many living things in the universe right now. I thought you were on my side. Me seeing minus twos just flood the stream chat. Oh yeah, this is doing numbers. A20 flashbacks. Remember when that was my YouTube channel? It was, I mean, now it's just Rumble vs. Dubs, so it's not like it's that much better. But remember when it was uh, just Isaac and Slay the Spire episodes every single day? And every Slay the Spire episode was just, the comments were filled with the biggest haters on planet Earth. I have no nostalgia for this era. I'm happy it's gone. That was a great era? No, not maybe, for you maybe. Not for me. <laughs> Not for me. Just begging for the location of the, the final Isaac DLC. 
playing Afterbirth Plus for four years straight. Dun, da, 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 da. Didn't that person post about it on Reddit too? Yeah, there was like one extreme hater. I don't know. So like, I'm, I'm not going to give out their name because I'm sure that, and I mean this not toxically, but like the kind of person that would dedicate themselves to like watching every Slay the Spire video to audit the mistakes that you made and then give them to you. Obviously, something's not going right in their home life, in my opinion. But anyway, um, yeah, they made a lot of toxic posts. That were like, your channel is going to die because you're bad at Slay the Spire. Like, you're so ass at this game. For some, And this is not Bear's fault, but for some reason, they were like a... Whoa! They were like a huge Bear fan. They were like, Bear stays winning because you suck at Slay the Spire. And then, like, I hadn't seen posts from them for, like, a long time. And I was like, oh, maybe they got their life together because I'm a wishful thinker. Then I thought I got a, I got a tweet from someone... That almost had exactly the same name. And they were like, check out my Twitch channel. You're a big inspiration for me. And I was like, look, you might be catching a stray on this one. But your name is so similar, if not exactly the same, as the, as the biggest hater I've ever had in my life. And I just, I'm not going to click on this. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. It's a high range gun. I saw my hit markers there. Dude, okay, this is a hot lobby, but we know who's left. We got a sniper up to the northeast, northwest. We got a sniper up to the northeast. And we have 1,800 bullets. I don't mind. I'll let it rain. Rain on me. Like Ariana Grande featuring Lady Gaga. And I, I, it, I'm not saying vice versa. He's getting third partied right now. Stop shooting so you can disappear into the ether. And then prepare yourself for the ultimate third party yourself. Anyone want to go up against the greatest strategic mind in gaming today? We stay winning. It's a five kills. A little embarrassing. It's only five kills, but sure, we'll pay out first place. He can punch and he can shoot. All right, let me see if my wife is ready to stream. She's already live. Bear would have won it better. Listen, you piece of shit. Don't try to pit me against my friends just because one of them is better at Slay this Buyer than the other one, okay? Try to pit me against Malf, get me to say some negative stuff about Played Up. I refuse. I will, I will talk negatively about Valorant, though. Okay. On the beginning of today's stream, you said you had dementia. Things change. That's why they call it the beginning and not the end. Fade to black, credits roll. Executive produced by Dick Wolf. MacDonald. Before the animals, before the farm, before he was old MacDonald. He was MacDonald. Go ahead, DDT me at, at 2 FPS. See if I give a shit. All right, all right. You know what? That means... Oh, I'm back! <laughs> I'm not back! Oh, shit. What a horrendous start. But also, what a very humorous start. I'm out of here, dude. See, this is what- now you run, but like, it's a very scary time to be running. Because a single dropkick puts you in hell. You kind of have to like, beat somebody's ass. And if it's your first day, you have to fight. Brain Buster. I don't even know what that shit is. I shouldn't have done the three-piece. I'm dead. I'm dead. I have one HP. <laughs> Jump scare. Hello, cat. You sure you want this? Should have wall splatted you. It happens, though. How about a quick wake-up Emerald Crusher? High-priority uppercut? Okay, I deserve that. I deserve that. I was getting a little greedy. I can't believe you managed to land the elbow drop. I can't believe I managed to miss my super. Emerald Crusher? Oh, you are so motherfucking lucky. Okay, get downed. You dodged it? Yes. You're killing your stam, dude. 
Again. Not again. You got no stam. You got no stam. We got no stam, that's what happens to you, okay? You try to dolphin dive me? Javelin tackle on wake up. Life's a bitch, honestly. Like, someone's eating a chicken back there. Javelin tackle on wake up. Oh no. Just, just jump. Javelin tackle on wake up. I am leaving. I'm splatting. Javelin tackle on wake up. The sweet science. People are much better with the unblockables than they used to be. That used to be like a, a, a guarantee. That hurt. I can't see because I can't see because of the fucking tree. <laughs> I can't see my opponent because there's a, a little canopy in my way. Still, decent game. Decent game. It's splatted. Get him. One of these days, man. You need to get diamond crusher. Well, how many people are over here? You're in the bush. Imagine, though. The ring's closing. I hope no one's how? how? Sway? Sway, explain this to me. I got baited, and I'll, I accept my bait. You know what? They're probably saying how right now, so I'm not sweating it. Haven't seen this super in so long. Well, you haven't seen it from me, but you'll, you'll see it from other people, I promise. I, I can't initiate with a diamond. That's what I'm realizing. I'm using it as an unblockable initiator. That's not a sensible approach. What are you doing up there? I've got to use it as a punish. I can't just use it as a tackle. Huge. Give me another little Irish whip. Send him. Why? You know there's a person with super, like, right... He's right behind me, isn't he? There's okay. There, you didn't. You haven't seen Super in a bit. Here you go. Honestly, the the cat fucked the whole thing up for us. Everything was going great. We had the person with Super dominated until the cat just wanted to left click. Two hundred and thirty-eight top five finishes. My lord. Okay, zero limbs. That's not great. Sixteen of forty. That's also not great. Yeah, I think they just got kicked off the edge. Uh, that's why I'm juicing. They're gonna drop kick. You wanna read that shit on my watch? I don't think so. Initiate with tackle. We got a jumper. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a jumper. I wish you would step back from that ledge, my friend. Okay, if, if they're gonna jump, we can't just spam tackle. We could spam it on that one, but that would have been a better time for a diamond crusher. One of those. I really thought you'd get splatted there. Super Saiyan Flores. Okay, now we got a mist. You add, you come back with 300, and I hit you for 295. We doing this together? Chill, chill. What are we doing? <laughs> We're not so different, you and I. What am I watching? You're watching Elite Rumbleverse gameplay. Okay. I wouldn't expect you to understand. I don't know, I actually lost sight of them. Okay, I see, I see what's going on here. You're, you're a little troll. And trolls get their pants pulled down and KO'd. You want it? You want to come in? You saw what just happened. You want a slice too? Yes. Little 
air mist? You like the air mist? Take a little air mist. I'm sipping. You just gave me meditate, you piece of crap. <laughs> oh, dude, the, the two stone cold stunners in a row. Actually, just insanely disrespectful. Didn't see that one coming, huh? Okay, I didn't see that one coming. Fair enough. What? I got no stam. I'm like, I'm, I'm super winded. I had a feeling that was gonna do it. Drink one of these for a quick little, quick little juice. I saw that coming a mile away. You gotta play with your ears in this damn game. That time, I was I just didn't think you had it in you, honestly. That time, I had a feeling that's what you were going for. Power has priority over Vicious Mist. Don't forget about that. Don't forget about that. You're a dropkick spammer. You're a dropkick spammer. And you know what? I am living for it. She's really reading the damn book over there. Saved. So unbelievably saved. I gotta get in. Unfortunate. Juice me! Please, be dead. <laughs> oh, just the... From out of nowhere, dude. Get him. Get him. Then I get you. Then you get me. That's the cycle of Rumbleverse right there. I'm gonna live. It's a hard one to choose, right? What do you choose on this one? I choose to meditate if possible and save super for a later situation. Holy cow, they're insane. They're actually... They're, they're, uh, they're gonna win. <laughs> she's, she, look at, she's learning new moves in the final circle. Holy cow. Yeah, it's over. Cindy, the gladiator. This is a good game, though. I think she just won. Yeah, she's the last person standing. Still, six eliminations. 13,000 damage is very good. Camper? I mean, I was camping as well. I can't really be mad at Cindy. She's girl bossing. Okay, I see your comment, by the way, about how to combo. I, I, I can't read it right now. I desperately want to. It's the only... I've, I've never wanted anything more in my life. Because I feel like it's very actionable information. <laughs> tackle is so fucked. <laughs> that's, that's green tackle too. What, what are you doing? Oh, he's disconnected. <laughs> that's what he's doing. Oh, what the hell? I was trying to free my friend. His net code got broken. Yeah, yeah, initiate on me. Nice initiate. <laughs> oh, shit. Get on him. What the hell? Stay on him. Go! Oh! Javelin tackle. He had the better tackle. Which means I'm the better person. Because I beat him with a, with a worse tackle. So I, I don't know how I'm going to win this one. With no red juice. Thought I would try to snag some freebies there. It's just pure rad. <laughs> Can they finish the fight? Okay, I honestly... <laughs> what is this book? What is this book? Seven. Dolphin dive. Five, I'm getting rid of mist. We're gonna we're gonna try to knock some fools into the water. That's our new that's our new strat. That's really bad. <laughs> Dude, he just gave the other person the win. We came second and third. I mean, you can't really be upset by that, I guess. That was...
It's a fun way to go. A doubter spotted, but still a fun way to go. Anytime you make the final circle, it's always fun. Oh, man. <clears throat> What's your favorite Simpsons couch gag? Oh, no, he won! He w Dude! Honestly? Me and who? This is, this is Jack and Rose from Titanic. That was an insane victory. Congratulations to you. Me when I tell Leonardo DiCaprio my 26th birthday is tomorrow. You saw the tweet. I'm just piggybacking on a better tweet. Okay. Plus two. <laughs> Plus two. Okay. Fair enough. Honestly, it's such a... Not today. The elbow drop is not even that good. Out of stamina? But it's so satisfying when it works. It's hard to resist. How do you feel about that? You want to use the super, motherfucker? I'll go super. I don't care. Second row. He splatted. Let me do it. No, I was hitting the other guy, you fool. Okay, that's just disgusting. <laughs> so Poison Sumo Clap is still sick. Don't get me wrong. I'm only getting rid of it because I think this could be fun too. And I really don't want to get rid of my Atomic Punchline. It's been doing some good work. You again. You know I'm a spammer. I didn't do it fast enough. I didn't do it fast enough. They're they dug it. They cued. <laughs> Yummy. They're, they do be zipping. Holy shit. <laughs> going off, dude. Holy cow. Just chill out for a second. APM was through the damn roof. There's no safety. Yeah, the tackle's really good. I mean, it, it, it's very quick, hard to react to. There's one kill. Whoa! <laughs> it's a great place to be, honestly. I'll just meditate here. Don't, don't tackle me. Back up and over. Land on it. Be scared. Be out of the circle. Have no... Have no response to this? Okay. Dude! Okay, we're back. He's got to be close. Yes! <laughs> oh, I felt it. As soon as we got that... It was just your... your Slowly pulling sandbags off until the whole levee bursts. Atomic punchline, honestly, kind of sick. Kind of sick. Ooh, little seven elimination victory. Take me, take me back to the main menu for a minute here. Oh. <laughs> slash moment? Slash moment? No. Okay. No, 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 no. No, no slash moments. They don't exist. Look, okay, top five finishes, 36. Sometimes people have said, oh, t you got killed by someone with 200 finishes? Then uh, you, that's probably about as many as you have. I have 36! I mean, I guess that's final circles reached now that I think about it. But also, matches played 176, eliminations 339. We're getting so freaking close. So close. By the way, super believers, enjoy your payout. To that two to one. Favorite protein powder, arms. We finally got there. It happened. Tell me all your thoughts on Pog. Cause I'm on my way to shoot him. Open your fan mail. Two, yeah, I gotta open my fan mail. Claim all. Chris Evans in, in Fantastic Four be like, claim all.
He plays the Human Torch. He says Flame On. You're in super mode. Conventional wisdom is definitely uh, don't touch him. Here I go touching him. <laughs> it, it worked. Get him again. Just get him. Let's go! Let's piss people off. Throw a book at him. Here's some shit going on over there too. Take one of those. Take a little sumo slam. Take one of those. Take a little sumo clap. Take one of these. Oh, wake up, hit me. Just kidding. You wouldn't dare. Okay, honestly, good tackle. It's a great move. I, w I can't blame you. I would love to have the move myself. You better hope you didn't get wall splatted, brother. Otherwise, you're in for a world of hurt. I've thrown a book at you. Who's next? Giant swing. Javelin tackle. It's a good move. You should listen to your friend Billy Zane. He's a cool dude. He just wants what's best for you. Did you did you see that Neo move? When I threw the book at him? That's fine. That's fine. Honestly, we're we're slapping. We're slapping each other. Oh, fourth party. Wait, we've seen this dude before. Oh, come on. We saw this dude last game. Oh my god, are you seeing some of this shit? I don't want to fuck with that guy. I'm, I'm out of there. He inspired pure terror. I'm not even going back for the better book. So that dude landed like a, an aerial giant swing combo bouncing off of a car. I'm gone. I'll see you in the final circle. Hopefully. Let me guess. <laughs> okay, he was scared. <laughs> he was scared. That's fair. My stam's broken. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. Your foolish decision saved me and doomed you. How about that? What a world. What a, what a tangled web we weave. I don't want to fight this purple guy. Like, I honestly just think he's too good. Okay, fair. Weapon priority. That's my bad. Great minds think alike, huh? Brilliant elimination. There we go. Right, honestly, insane combo. Unbelievable. You're 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 god. Two gamers remain. Me and who? I wanted that one. I should have elbow dropped them. I remember now. Gonna be feeling that one. Nine, eight, seven, My stam. Six, it's all right. I got a super. Five, Don't die to DQ though. Four, that that would be like an embarrassment. Good move, honestly. I'm dead. Incredible. Well done. Honestly, well done. We had the win on the on the cusp of our fingers and they pulled it back. Your mom's my dad 69. You outplayed me. Enjoy your victory. I'm I'm in hell. I I mean, what do you do? I don't even heal off of juice. I have to get a I have to get a kill to heal. We got, we got a snipe. I, I have to steal someone's kill. These guys have to get weak. And then I got to do that. And then I got to run away for a minute. So I can take time for the healing to come back. And I could taunt them and maybe get some super if they're looking at me. Oh <laughs> no. Oh, what have I done? The full boomer moment. I'm out of here. I was trying to throw the book at him, but instead I, I started to read it. Open up the damn map. Uh, the greatest reflexes mankind has ever seen. That That's not a kill. We do have super. I should activate my own super. Just be, be dead! Thank you for the healing!
that landed. I'm I'm trapped. Help, help me. I'm 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 in the wall. I'm I'm stuck. This is this is where it ends. I'm gonna die to DQ. Okay, yeah, that's gonna be a refund. Do the taunt. <laughs> All right. Um, we we delete that bet, unfortunately. Slash moment. The second time this happened. I I probably shouldn't be fighting this guy. I mean, he he does have super. On the other hand, he seems like. No offense, but like a little assy. I got a superstar ready. You did it to yourself, brother. Irish whip him into the wall. Oh! Okay, you're just, you're a good gamer. I don't really want to fight you. I want, I want this red juice. I'm not giving you target lock on. I know. It's it honestly is fucked that that didn't hit me. <laughs> I, it's fucked. It's fucked. That should have hit me. By all accounts, you should be mad. My brother in Christ. They were about to die. We were about to kill the person that was probably going to win this game. Instead, you came over here. Mmm. I knew it. I knew it. Instead, you come over here with a drop kick of all things you could be doing to me. You you drop kick me. It'll take more than that to knock their opponent out of this game. That's such a huge tip that you get the free elbow drop. I've tricked you. I'm not low on HP. I'm actually very high on HP, sir. It used to be like, I have to fish for like mist or sumo clap. I recognize I have sumo clap right now, by the way. But that's just because it's really good. Like it's like really good. Also great at life stealing. my stand back. Carlito wants his stand back. Okay, good nut punch. Good wake up nut punch. If you splatted. <laughs> so lucky. Sorry, I need stand back anyway. Whatever. Should have gotten some sick perks off of that. Yeah, I do need to learn about charging the sumo clap because I just like don't be doing it. Is you? That's how you do it, brother. Okay, an insult is an insult to me. So as you insult me, I insult you. Okay, good. That's my go-to. That's my chair. Chair hit is my go-to. So I, how am I, how am I gonna be mad? My god, we landed a super in the final circle. My goodness, what an elimination. Threw a threw a damn bat at me. Splat me? No splat. Another super? He's actually just a superior gamer. Honestly, he knows exactly what I'm doing before I even do. Someone's going to the moon. I just I just wanted to be involved. I just wanted to be involved. I'm sorry I stole your kill. I just wanted to be involved. Yoink. I'm sorry I stole your kill. Three gamers remain. Two gamers remain. Who is it? Me and who? <laughs> Me and you?
Okay, good kick. Just kidding. I got insanely lucky. I'm continuing to get insanely lucky. It's still happening. Oh. Please. We were going off, man. Get him! Oh, imagine though. Hold on, they're, they're, they're doing some good stuff too. Here, this is it. moment I felt it I felt it the sumo clap with a green sweet chin music too eight eliminations it's a it's a pretty good game there's a pretty good game in there might as well pop the juice I agree couldn't agree more I'm saved you even had a chicken in your pocket. And there's weapons throwers, actually the least pog gamers in the game. Oh no, oh no, oh no! <laughs> what a shot, what a shot, honestly. Well played.